Yeah, hello. Good morning. Yeah, hello. Good morning. Now should be better. Can you hear me? Yes, absolutely. Uh, My now, yeah, good morning. Uh, good morning Mr. Yeah. Hello, Rudolf. My name is Joe. Welcome to the show. Don't do it like Joe. All about family, friends, football and Forex. And I have a big honor to welcome you, uh, Mr. Rudolf Elmer, uh, to our show. Hello. How are things there? Where are you right now? Oh, so far so good. Uh, I can't complain, even though I struggle a bit with my health, but otherwise I'm fine. Okay. I see you haven't lost your sense of humor of many, many, many years of battle. And uh, I, uh, I, I, <laughs> I, I, I would like to know from a person like you with so much financial background, uh, what is occupying your mind right now the most when you get up where is your mind what are you uh, thinking of oh there are several issues uh, uh, basically at the moment it's really my health uh, i was diagnosed cancer and that's an issue which i have to deal with but uh, then i'm still uh, thinking about uh, fighting my fight against the judicial system of switzerland uh, there's still a case uh, uh, in the Federal Court of Switzerland uh, and generally speaking uh, when I get up in the morning uh, my thoughts are with the family um, I enjoy my family very much very good very good uh, uh, it sounds to hear that you have a health issue but apart apart from the health issue now when you think back the last 15 years yeah. what were the most challenging months or year for you in this whole period since nine, uh, 2002 since this thing started escalating uh, the most challenging time definitely was uh, during the period when i learned that the police the judicial system actually uh, tries to destroy not only me, also my relationship to my family. I mean, we had no protection on respect of uh, the harassment we and the stalking made by uh, the private detectives of Julius Baer. Uh, the police uh, didn't get involved in it at all. Uh, they just protected the bank. Uh, so, and I was mentally, put it this way, driven sick. Uh, uh, in the case of uh, that uh, I also was thinking about suicide honestly speaking uh, but uh, I do have a great family and uh, 
that would, wouldn't have been the solution at all. So the, the most difficult time was when I was fighting alone, having no support uh, by the media, by the, the public, civil society, uh, during the time when the stalking was going on. Yes. And uh, you were a, a chief operating officer of a well-known bank here, Julius Bear Bank. You were based in the Cayman Islands and you were a really high responsible and, and highly appreciated uh, financial specialist. And then you got into that. Uh, now, looking at it, uh, life has changed for you. Now you are basically in Switzerland with your family. How do you start now your day? Like when you get up, do you have any morning habits or evening habits to calm down about all of that? <laughs> yeah, definitely. I mean, <laughs> I start my life with a smile. That's the most important thing. <laughs> uh, it's not a sunny day or another day going on. It doesn't even be to be sunny. It could be a rainy day. It's also a great day because I do like yeah. nature and life and so on. So this is really one thing I have. And the other thing is that... Uh, uh, I'm a Christian, I talk to God, I pray and uh, have a great relationship uh, up there. Sometimes I complain to him. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, most often I receive uh, responses, wonderful responses, because I had went through three, uh, through three near-death experiences uh, during, based on my, my issue. Uh, and uh, so yes, and I do some Tai Chi Chuan and like sport. Uh, usually, I mean, I'm an elderly guy, but I still play junior hockey with guys of 20, 30 as a keeper. So uh, I take part in the life. Definitely, I do. So Very good. I do enjoy my life, and uh, basically, what uh, the, the, the the judicial part of it I'm fighting is. Uh, yeah, I'll put it this way. I, I have to smile about it, and I'm, I'm always very curious. The reasoning, prosecutors or judges try to, uh, they come up with to turn down my complaints. It's it's I, it, it's really fun <laughs> to uh, to 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 realize how difficult for them is to turn down my complaint. So Fantastic. anyway, I, I don't mind it. It's it's. it's uh, I know what they do, but uh, definitely uh, it's not really about law and order. Yes, we, we <laughs> since since we are in touch, uh, because before, as the whole world, most people only knew you or know you by media, like rather by the interviews you give or the public speaking sessions you do. Uh, and I have experienced you as very professional and really with a good sense of humor person, you know, uh, after yeah. all, that's the good news. That's the good news, uh, I think. Mm -hmm. uh, now, uh, you got into a situation where you didn't have a choice. In 2002, this overwhelmed you. Uh, now, when this happened to someone in Switzerland or anyone worldwide in the financial industry who experiences also wrongdoing internal, uh, what would you recommend these people? Yeah, uh, that's not really good news, uh, <laughs> to be to be honest, because uh, I've dealt now with several whistleblowers who approach me, and basically uh, what I do, I ask them, uh, do you have a family? Uh, do you want to continue your work in your uh, professional area? And if one of those two answers is a no, I say yes, I say don't blow the whistle at all at all, not even anonymously, because uh, uh, it's pretty clear that and uh, that they that the counterparties will try to do find to find out who is the the, the informant and uh, or the, the person I call it with a uh, the conscientious objector who uh, brought that issue to the public and. Uh, it's key for these guys to destroy that person and uh, in whatever sense. I mean, it could be uh, physically, it could be mentally, it could be professionally. Uh, basically, in my case, uh, I'm, I'm pretty sure they really wanted to hang me at the party plots of Zurich and make an example to say, if you blow the whistle in, in the financial center of Switzerland, you get be hanged on the party plots. 
<laughs> yes, I, 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 of course, of course, I follow your story already like uh, 10 years probably since this big uh, outing with, uh, what was his name from WikiLeaks, uh, Julian Assange. Uh, Julian. I think. Yeah, that was the starting point of my story, really the breakthrough. I mean, I have, couldn't believe it that uh julius Burry is that stupid and take the, the case to the court in the united states and challenging the uh first amendment of uh, uh free speech and free press because that made the case globally known i mean <laughs> and yes, yes. the next step was that the judge had to withdraw his decision to close down the wikileaks servers and so on so basically what well, uh, uh, what happened is, is is tremendous. I mean, I wouldn't have ha thought about to have that huge impact uh, no, in the you're world. All, now you are world famous. Now you are world famous, what? and I think uh, I think the latest the latest good news or the, what I see as a compliment is a you got uh, basically it was called that you have not breached the banking secrecy that was in 2018 october it was decided right yeah. right yeah but i mean it was pretty obvious already since uh, in 2005 even the prosecutor said look uh in 2006 that uh, in writing that uh, julius bear uh, is wrong with uh filing a complaint against me because uh they not even provided any Swiss bank accounts, uh, which I made public. And when I filed the complaint against uh, Julius Baer in respect of social security fraud, Julius Baer wrote to the prosecutor in a two-letter page, uh, Mr. Elmer is employed in the Cayman Islands. He is under Cayman law. He's not under Swiss law. Uh, there's no connection to Julius Baer Zurich and the prosecutor actually used that information to, uh, to to stop the criminal investigation against the bank. I mean, the, they, uh, the bank was, was uh, withholding or cheating on, 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 on social security to, to the Swiss government. I mean, <laughs> well, the Swiss people put it this way. Uh, Very, they knew yeah. precisely, uh, knew precisely uh, uh, in 2008 already that there is no connection to uh, Switzerland at all in, in my case and when i filed the complaint against the bank to the federal prosecution office in 2009 provided all the data on C cd within 10 days i had the response from the federal prosecutor of uh, switzerland that there is no connection to switzerland they wrote the four page uh, letter to the bank and to the prosecutor i only received one page they said look mr elmer we're not going into details we don't uh, follow through here that's it but on the four letter pages to the prosec uh, prosecutor and julius bear uh, which i got hold of by by chance i mean uh, i was a lucky incident uh, they wrote about clients like Arturo Agosto Chaparro, the police officer in, 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 in Mexico, who was involved in drug dealing, was killed in 2011, went to prison and so on. And all sorts of clients, because I named the clients uh, and related to them to the Guardian report. Guardian UK, uh, Nick Davis, he was one of the famous, uh, tax, uh, uh, famous uh, reporters in the UK actually went to Mauritius and we reviewed the data and they wrote about uh, two great reports about Julius Baer uh, and, and the data and named the clients, dubious clients, criminal clients you can call, uh, but the federal prosecutor office uh, didn't go into detail at all. Uh, they just simply turned down my complaint and on top of it, this is the big show I felt that the prosecutor in 2006 of, uh, uh, wanted to provide the information to the federal tax authorities of Switzerland. And I was in contact with the federal tax authority of Switzerland uh, and, uh, in order to investigate the Swiss tax evaders. But uh, 
the higher prosecution office felt we are not responsible for it we can't give the information to uh, to the federal prosecution office uh, and then the case went on to the tax commission two of zurich state of zurich uh, the tax commission uh, uh, of the state of zurich decided the data is not uh, cannot be investigated because it's unusual if that data is confiscated in Switzerland about the Cayman Bank. And obviously, I have stolen the data. I have stolen the data, but <laughs> I couldn't steal the data at all because I was responsible for the data from a legal point of view. So basically, it meant that not only the uh, Zurich's courts, but also the tax commission of the state of Zurich, which actually should work in favor of the, 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 the citizen, uh, decided not to investigate the data. So it, it's incredible, very, an incredible story. Very complex and very incredible. Yes, indeed. I, I visited your website a few times and for everybody who used this can go there to find more details. Uh, I think, uh, Rudolf, you are born here in Switzerland, right? You went through all the schools in Switzerland. You played football yeah. in Switzerland. And until 2002, you were basically someone everybody looked up like a Swiss citizen. You did everything in order. You worked for a Swiss bank. And then it turned around. Now, has your opinion changed on the Finanzplatz Schweiz and on the law system here in Switzerland? Uh, definitely. I mean, uh, I worked as an internal auditor uh, for Julius Baer, uh, and uh, during that time, uh, I learned that, for instance, uh, Hans E. Baer, who was the flagship of the Julius Baer Group, actually kicked out clients of Julius Baer. Uh, I felt that the bank uh, works, from an audited point of view, uh, 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 works according to the law but uh, when i moved to the caymans it was definitely different then i learned i was on the other side of how you called it of the fence which the boss uh, the former chief accountant told me down there you are now on the other side of the fence so what does that mean i mean you are now a criminal or whatever <laughs> well or you have to work as a criminal uh, so, uh, my view on the Swiss uh, banking system as well as the judicial system uh, has changed drastically since 2005. I do believe and I'm convinced that uh, both are morally and ethically corrupt. And as my lawyer in the United States, Jack Blom, told or said in the documentary leak in paradise uh jack blom is what used to be the chief investigator of the u.s senate in the case of the bcci and he dealt with my case in the united states uh said that the swiss parliament is corrupt now i'm not saying that, that, that each uh member of the parliament is corrupt but in general the decision they take i mean for instance, we talk about uh, whistleblower protection law. It was turned down in 2010 again. So whistleblowers in Switzerland have no protection at all. They are really free to be, uh, not saying killed, but that's happening in other countries. And you <laughs> journalists, whatever, are killed. In Switzerland, they are simply, uh, put it this way, uh, can be treated badly by the judicial system and by the journalists and whatever. I mean, uh, it was very difficult on my end to uh, approach Swiss journalists and uh, make them uh, provide, make them or learn them about what's happening and make the, through them the public known how corrupt the system is. My my view is you got yourself through 18 years of battle. You still have a sense of humor. You you still believe in God and you have a smile in your face. And it's really a pleasure <laughs> to, to, to communicate with you. Uh, Rudolf, I will ask you to 
to, to do a follow-up uh, meeting in person. Uh, let's yeah. agree that offline because it's so much more to talk, but usually my, my sessions, they go about 20 minutes. Now, last but not yeah. least, one more question, Rudolf. This show yeah. or this vlog is called Don't Do It Like Joe because I myself, I have, mis I have made mistakes in my life which I also sometimes give to my kids. If somebody says, don't do it like Rudolf, what would be things in your life, what you would like to give the young generation as an advice, what they could do or learn from your life story? Yeah. I think one of the most important things for anyone is that you do not get dependent on a system and what i mean by that if you if you make a career in the bank i mean you they provide you with a lot of goodies you get a lot of money you're gonna have your house you're gonna have your yacht your whatever you have and uh and you're gonna enjoy that but uh in other words it means that you are that you are part of the system. They do it deliberately. They feed you with that, with those goodies, and then you get dependent on them, which in my case wasn't, uh, I, I didn't get really dependent on them because I live with my family in the Caymans or even in Mauritius, wherever, in a three bed apartment. So I could put money aside. But once you get dependent on a system, they will force you to sign things which you would never have signed when you were 18 or 20. And uh, uh, so that's really important. Watch out for, for that thing that you don't get dependent on a system financially. All right. So thank you very much. Robert. We see each other yeah. in soon time for a follow-up. I wish you good health. Yeah, I wish you good health you. and uh, a pleasant uh, continuation of the week. Thanks a lot. Yeah, Rudolf. Thank you very much for having me. Huh? Bye, Joe. Yeah, it, it was a great pleasure. Thanks, Rudolf. Bye bye. You're welcome.